Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS had a ton of different updates this past week. With iOS 16.2, all of the different releases with watchOS, macOS, as well as iOS 15.7.2, 16.3 beta 1, and so there's even more to talk about as far as new features, changes, and updates. We'll also go over battery life, performance, any remaining bugs, and what to expect with iOS 17. Also, for those of you that are no longer on Twitter or other social media networks, I also have not only a Discord, but also Mastodon and Hive, and those will be linked down in the description. So if you want to join on Mastodon, I'm there as well now. It's hard to keep up with all of them, but I figured I'd just jump on there in case anyone else is there as well. Now, as far as new updates and changes, well, Maps has been updated for different countries. If we go into Maps, depending on where you are, the new version of Maps that we've had in the United States and other places around Europe for quite some time is starting to show up in the Netherlands, Belgium, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, and Switzerland. So you should start seeing those updated maps with more information, more about landmarks, 3D models, and much more. If you've already got those updated, let me know in the comments below. Now, Emergency SOS via satellite was added this week in a few different countries. We had it in the United States where you could trigger that if you're in an area with no cell signal or Wi-Fi, or you can even try it out. You go into your settings and then you go down to Emergency SOS and scroll to the bottom. At the bottom, we have a demo. We can try the demo and it talks about, about satellite connectivity, tries to help you find where the actual satellite is, connect with it and show you exactly how it works. This is now available in France, Germany, Ireland, and the UK. So that was released on Tuesday along with iOS 16.2, but it's not a part of 16.2. They just pushed it remotely. Also a press release this week said Apple is planning to launch emergency SOS via satellite in other countries in 2023. So if you wanted to try this out, you could do that and you'd be able to test it for yourself. Being inside, it's not going to work so well, but if you want to try it out outside, you can go and test it in your country and see if it's working. Now, something I didn't mention in previous updates that's been there for a little bit is if we go into photos, I took some screenshots. If you're in the car and you're using Siri, it will sense that movement and let you know that you're in a car and not show you the screen. It's just sort of blank since you're probably driving. Additionally, if you're playing a song, it will show that same car icon down where the music is playing on your lock screen and then again if you go into your airplay settings you'll see it there so it gives you just a little bit more information as to what you're playing to it recognizes that it's a car and that it's connected to a vehicle and it's only going to show you some information while you're driving now, Apple Music Sing was released this past week as well and we talked about that in different videos and if we go to browse wait for it to load here and it's taking a little while, but Apple Music Sing allows you to use karaoke on your iPhone. And if we scroll down to the bottom, we should have some different Apple Music Sing playlists. So you could start singing and more. And then additionally with Apple Music Sing, there was a splash screen I showed in iOS 16.3 that's now showing up on 16.2 the first time you go into music. And I took a screenshot of that and the splash screen looks like this, just explaining more about it. Also, something else I've found within music is if you scroll all the way down to the bottom when you're under browse, there's an option to send a free trial to friends. I didn't see this before. I was going to browse some new music, see what was new this week as new music seems to get released on Friday now instead of Tuesday like it used to. And if we tap on it, we can send a free trial to friends. It says give your friends up to three months free of Apple Music. So that's something I'm showing. This is on 16.3, but it should be there in other versions as well. And while this one is not really a feature, the location icon is now present all the time in iOS 16.2 and 16.3. It's always there and you'll see system services is what it's using and it's using your location. It never seems to go away, even though I don't have any settings that have changed. So that's something that's a little bit annoying. Hopefully it's not using more power, but it's something that's a little different there. There's also new features we're waiting for in additional countries. Within settings, if we tap on our name at the top, under iCloud, this week we have the new advanced data protection. This is something that's available in the United States only, it seems right now, but it should be coming to other countries soon. So right now it's available in the US, and if I go to turn it on, I still have to update a bunch of devices so I can do this. I didn't clarify that in my video when this actually released. So you'll see I have a bunch of different devices that I need to update right now, and I'll have to get those up to date and then we'll be good to go. But it's still taking me a while as I have to either remove them or update them.
Also, we're waiting for Apple Pay later. We haven't seen that yet, and Apple's mentioned it before, but we're still waiting for that. Also, we're waiting for Apple Card savings accounts. Those were mentioned specifically in the watchOS 9.2 release notes. It said you could actually check your information based on the balance on your watch within the wallet app, but it's not a feature that's active on iOS yet. So hopefully it's going to be very, very soon, but it was something we should have already had and they keep delaying. Additionally, we're still waiting for Apple Music Classical. Now, the one thing I find a bit confusing is why they couldn't just add the genre here instead of having a whole separate app. Apple purchased Prime Phonic, which dealt specifically with classical music, and many have seen different app codes for things such as a classical music app. So within the code, we've seen that, but we have our own section for classical. So there's no reason really to have a separate app for it. So maybe Apple's changing their mind and we won't have that. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. Now, also one thing leaked this week about iOS 17. It looks like iOS 17 is going to have third-party app stores in some countries, according to Mark Gurman. This makes a lot of sense as it has to comply with different rules in the EU to open up the app store and other things. So if we go into the news article, and you'll see Mark Gurman posted an article on Bloomberg and also said Apple is preparing to allow alternative app stores and sideloading on iOS, along with a slew of other changes to make the iPhone more open. This is in response to new European Union requirements arriving in 2024. There's a video about it as well on the website. If you want to check it out, you can do that. And this particular update makes a lot of sense as they have to comply, just like they have to comply with the USB-C law that's coming up soon. So we should see that with iPhone iPhone 15. So they would have to open this up to alternative app stores, but we see that on Mac already. You can install third-party apps like we have been able to for years, just like we can do on Android, just like we can do on Mac OS and Windows as well. So I don't think it will really hurt anything. You don't have to do it, but everything will be in the app store or people could put them outside the app store. However, they may have to open up apps such as messages to allow third-party integration with different companies such as Google. So we could see all of that within the next year and a half to two years with a major change. And some of this makes sense to just get it ready with iOS 17. However, Apple may certainly be working on different stability updates and more features as well to either comply with that or just do something completely different. Let me know what you think about those third-party app stores and them having to open it up in the comments below. This week, we also had the release of a first for macOS with macOS Ventura 13.2 beta rapid security response. This is just like what we had with iOS a little while ago. We've had a couple of those as Apple prepares to make sure everything's ready and tested so that they can push this out to people that have normal public versions and then just push small security updates instead of actually pushing a whole OS over and over. This is a major change with iOS and we'll see this start to roll out pretty soon. I would imagine probably as soon as 2023. Apple said it would be here with iOS 16. So it makes sense. We would see that soon. So we'll probably have a rapid security response. Then we'll have a major update with all of the features and bug fixes then maybe another security response. And speaking of security updates, I didn't mention those in the iOS 16.2 video. So if we go to the website with the security updates, and if we scroll down, you'll see a lot of different updates from core services, GPU drivers, you'll see graphics drivers, and on and on. iTunes store, kernel updates, and more. Kernel is the underlying code that runs the operating system. And you'll see it says impact, an app may be able to break out of its sandbox, meaning it could interfere with other apps, unlike it's supposed to. And to fix that, the issue was addressed with improved memory handling. And then it gives the CVE number and who helped report it and get it fixed. So lots of security updates this week. I didn't mention in the initial video and definitely I would update just for those reasons alone, but let's talk about the remaining bugs that are in iOS 16.2 and 16.3. The swipe home lag that I had with iOS 16.2 seems to be gone in 16.3, meaning if I play this song, let me turn down the volume, play this song here, and then swipe home, it goes to the dynamic island, and it's nice and fast, and it doesn't lag at all. Typically, this would recur after a couple of days, and so far it hasn't shown up again. So this is great news. It kept showing up over and over, and so far with 16.3 it hasn't. However, with 16.2 it did, but it took a few days to show up. And I have that running on a couple devices, but 16.2 in general, the same thing. 
This is the same wallpaper from the 16.2 video. If I play this song, let's see if it will lag. So if we push play, swipe home, it looks okay this time, but again, sometimes it's really slow and it takes a few days to actually show that it's slow. Now, other bugs that are still there is lag in games. I've heard a lot of people say that with iOS 16.2, 16.3, it looks like there's a lot of lag there still with League of Legends and other games where it would just stutter and not have a, a smooth or fast frame rate. So that's a little bit unfortunate. One issue I keep having, not only with iOS 16.2, but also 16.3 is YouTube. Oftentimes I'll go into YouTube and it'll say I have no internet connection, even though I have Wi-Fi connected. And I can go to Safari, Wi-Fi will work just fine. I can go to different websites, refresh, but YouTube wouldn't work. I don't know if this is a result of the YouTube app or a bug within iOS, but there are updates that came out today for YouTube and I haven't installed that yet. So make sure you check for those, tap on App Store, then tap your name in the upper right. Once you pull down to refresh, you'll see I have a bunch of updates I need to install, but one's for YouTube and it says it fixes performance. So hopefully that fixes some issues. Let's install it and see if we still have that rotation bug as well that I had with YouTube. We'll give it just a moment. So it's loaded, let's go into YouTube. We'll play one of my videos. Let's rotate. It still has that little stutter when you rotate to landscape, but it does seem to be much faster. So that was nice and fast the first time I opened it. So hopefully I don't have that issue with a lack of connection. Maybe it was just an app, could be iOS though. We'll have to see how that goes since this updates here. Also, there's been VPN issues reported by some people where they just won't work properly. Although I don't know the specific VPN people are using. Also, there's a known bug with AirPods cases where they'll show 0% for the case. This isn't fixed in iOS 16.2 or 16.3. So if we open this up, let's see if we can connect here. These are AirPods Pro 2. Let's take them out of the case and put them in my ear here. And now I'm not even getting the case information. Let's see if we can get that. So maybe it's a bug where it's just not reporting at all. 16.3 is just showing nothing as far as the case where maybe 16.2 just reports zero. Also, many have asked about the iPhone 14 pro and pro max camera bugs. If we take a photo, so let me first rotate this. Let me snap a screenshot here and then I'll share this and I'll show you what the photo looks like after we take this. So we'll snap a photo and see what it looks like processed. And let me know what you think about it. I'm not sure that they've fixed it. They definitely seem to darken it a little bit, but Overall, it's looking okay. I took a bunch of photos outside for a comparison today and it seemed okay. Additionally, it seems like there's still other little bugs here and there, and it's quite interesting and a little bit sad at this point that there's still so many bugs in the recent updates. I don't really remember another time other than maybe iOS 11 or some of the earlier ones where we had a very buggy release this long into the updates. Some people say it's fine, but I'm getting a lot of people wishing they could downgrade to iOS 15.7.2. You can actually do that, but you would have to have the developer account and have recent IPSW files in order to do that. So it's not that simple to do. Apple doesn't make it easy. And of course you can't do that on the latest phones as it's just not possible. They shipped with iOS 16. As far as overall performance, while well, I mentioned the games with lag, I didn't really see any lag on my end as far as ProMotion and speed, and really everything's nice and fast in 16.3 for me, other than that lag with the swipe home bug I mentioned on 16.2 that I have here on the left. So again, it doesn't seem to be an issue. It seems to be nice and fast right now, but for some people it's stuttering again and there's lag all over the place. I'm not seeing it thankfully, but it will take a few days to show up on 16.2 again, 16.3. So far, I haven't seen any of that. So maybe they finally fixed it, but if they haven't, make sure that you report it in feedback so that it can work on that. As far as overall benchmarks, they're quite good. As I ran them again, after I ran them the other day, we'll go into our history and take a look at the most recent benchmarks. So let's see if we can find it. And I found the benchmark from today. It's quite good at 1,872 for single core, 5,412 for multi-core. If we compare that to the previous time on the 14th, it's quite a bit better. And if we compare it to iOS 16.2, it's actually about 11 better for single core and 400 better or 410 better for multi-core. So performance wise, I really don't see an issue with 16.3, but 16.2 could have a few issues here and there.
Additionally, as far as battery life, well, I've had mixed results. I had a friend contact me right before we're filming this video on iOS 16.2, who said it completely changed his battery life in a good way. It doubled his battery life. Now, as far as how he's using his phone, of course, can play into that, but that was quite surprising to hear. So some people are having a great experience. Others aren't. For me, for example, iOS 16.3 and 16.2, I can show here in my battery. And my battery health dropped recently to 99%. That's the first time that's happened so soon. But again, I've mentioned that before. I don't really check it until I share it with you here. And as far as overall battery life, well, today I've had two hours and 57 minutes of screen active time, three hours and 49 minutes of screen off time or screen idle time. And I've used under 50% of my battery. The day before, it's about the same, maybe a little bit less. And the day before that was pretty terrible. But if we go back to 16.2, it still was getting less battery for the amount used. And of course that leads me to, should you install iOS 16.2 or 16.3? Well, 16.2, just for the security updates alone, I would install it. However, if you're on iOS 15, you may want to hold out on those versions for a little while. And I wouldn't install iOS 16.3 betas probably until maybe beta two or beta three. I would not expect the next version until probably January. The second week of January is typically when Apple releases the next beta. I would not expect a beta for a few weeks now as we're into the holiday season with Christmas next, next weekend and then New Year's. And then of course we have CES that week as well. And then the week after that is when I would expect the update. This could change of course, but that's typically what Apple's been doing for the past few years. And then we'll have 16.3. And of course, just six months from now or so, we're going to have the first look at iOS 17 in June. Usually the beginning of June, we'll see iOS 17. And then of course, betas until September. That's usually how it goes every single year. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the YouTube community poll and see what you had to say about it. At the time of this video, there's almost 10,000 votes. So thanks to everyone that voted, 81% of you are on the public version of iOS 16.2. 9% decided to go to the beta at 16.3 beta 1, 4% are on 15.7.2 or older, 1% on 14.8 or older, and 5% are using something else. That could be Android, it could be an older version of iOS, iOS 6 even. Let me know what you've got in the comments below. Steven George 5605 said iPhone mini 13 with iOS 16.2 and everything seems to be working well. Haven't noticed any bugs or glitches and battery life is still good. City boy said iOS 16.2 is super buggy for my 13 pro max and M2 iPad pro. The battery widget doesn't show correct battery. The AirPods won't switch devices automatically. iOS 16.2 runs great for me. Just for some reason, my home pods disappeared from control center. I have five home pods in the home and they are all there. All home pods are version 16.2. I don't know what to do. I did a reboot, reset everything, and you are no longer in the control center. Greetings from Austria, Europe. I would try maybe removing them and re-adding them in the home app or upgrading the overall architecture once everything's upgraded. That should be a message in your home app. So if you go into home, within your home settings, if you go to software update, you might see home upgrade available. Go ahead and tap on that and it will say once your software is up to date, you can upgrade this home. Make sure that's upgraded. That could be the reason they're not showing up. Using iOS 16.3 beta, having problems with VPN. And so that's everything with iOS 16.2 and iOS 16.3 beta 1. The next few weeks could be a bit slow. Of course, I'll have the regular news updates and maybe more to talk about with iOS as we learn more about maybe the future of iOS and other things. If there's any other videos you'd like me to make, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below, whether that be comparisons or something I just haven't made before. I'd love to hear from you there. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.